I think I got it. I think I got it. Here at the shop where we're loading up skid loader because we've got a freaking new job finally. Feels like Greg and I have been on the same jobs for the last couple years. Greg, are you excited to start a new job? I don't know if you can hear him over the machine. We got the skid loader running. We're gonna load up a couple things on the trailer. And we gotta go down and get our first delivery. We've got our columns and our sauna tubes coming. Uh, I think tomorrow morning all of our lumber shows up. This afternoon, our Midwest Perma Column brackets show up. So next couple days for us will be a lot of moving stuff around and getting set up. And I wanna kinda take you guys through a little bit of that. And we're gonna be building a shop a 60 by 64 and I want to know in this video um, down in the comments things that you guys want me to talk about I've done a lot of videos but I've also get, you know gained a lot of followers over the years that maybe haven't seen some of the early videos where I really started with basic post frame building um, so my thought was to kind of go back and reintroduce a lot of you to the basics of post frame to hopefully help a lot of you see the benefits and also maybe go out and build your own. So let me know down below in the comments the things that you want to see, maybe that I can make a dedicated video on. All right, got the Kubota loaded up, bucket, forks, auger, and uh, we'll go ahead and throw those saw horses on too. You always need a good set of saw horses. I've really been liking the BMB 20K, so this 20K trailer is super singles, uh, so double axle, but only singles, no doubles like that gooseneck over there. This thing turns, backs up real nice. Oh, I almost, I almost forgot this, and this could have been catastrophic, okay? Something you always must do. Yeah, this ain't going nowhere. Okay. We're good. Good to go. All right, first time at the site, and uh, it's kind of the beauty sometimes. See how much this uh, sticks out of the ground? Well, I'm pretty sure that's all full of gravel, road rock, so lots of gravel means uh, big holes. We'll get them all dug and filled up, though. It's an A flat. I don't think it's going anywhere, I don't but know I, it's an a flat. let's get a sharp. Could be a F sharp, maybe. There we go. Trailer wasn't connected all the way. It's not good when you want trailer brakes. Yeah, okay, we're good. All right, guys, I am excited. I hope you guys are excited too. It has felt like ages since we've been to a new job site. 
because it has. We've been doing some highly detailed, long-term jobs, some homes over the last couple of years of like big projects. And we're finally going to be doing a nice run of like workshops, buildings that like we cut our teeth in in the post frame industry, things that were what we consider good and efficient at. And um, yeah, so hope you guys are excited for this new ride. Make sure you guys subscribe and follow along with the build. It's gonna be a workshop. I think a very standard size workshop with a lot of standard features. And we just drove by the, uh, the barn dominium. That's always cool when you're driving around the countryside and you see your past projects. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, that was a pretty epic home. So we're just gonna get down to the job site. It's only about 10 minute drive and we'll get started. All right guys, so we just got done with uh, this layout. I actually did a full video on layout. If you guys wanna nerd out and get in deep on what the layout is, uh, how to get this perfect square with batter boards and string lines. And now what we're doing, are you exact? Uh, is just marking all the post locations. We've got a big garage door here. 17, 10 and a half. Um, and then we're gonna be able to, well, we'll be able to start digging our hole. All right, hold it there, I'll run this out. Are you exact footage? Okay, seven, 10 and a half. 15, 23, 31, 39. I always read out my measurements so Greg can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, 47, 10 and a half, 55, 10 and a half. It's always something, dude. Oh, wow, what is this? Just needed a little bit of muscle, Greg. We haven't dug holes in about a year, so this, I don't know, do you have to change oil in these things once in a while? Never done that. I'm always of the mindset that Preventative maintenance is for the birds. You know, you fix things when they're broke, you know? What is our level at? Uh, we probably need more. <laughs> yeah, I got it. All right, give that a give that a go, make sure it's all good. Yeah? Yep. Oh, oh, up. Not bad, Greg. All right. Let's just start with an easy-ish one, huh? Hey, you notice how rusty that is? Wait till this first hole's done. That's only like, what, eight inches of gravel? This is where the problem is, Greg, because it's gonna be hard to know exactly where my hole is. Right there. You got those uh, crummer shoulders ready? Yeah. Otherwise, I mean, actually, I don't even know because it's all like caving pretty good like this. Do we worry about it caving in or no? Nah, eh, probably not. I mean, we're barely out of the ground and look how much gravel came back in.
So we're digging these holes about, we're basically burying the, the auger up to the bottom of the pumpkin. The pumpkin is that big round thing at the top. And that ensures that we're at least down below 48 inches, which is the, well, 42 inches is our frost line, but a little bit bigger footing is never gonna hurt anything. So once I get down to depth, I just gotta make sure I get all this debris out, clean it out as much as possible. We're always gonna get a little gravel down there. And old, old Greg's gonna, you got your stamper, Greg? Do we have it? We should have our stamper. We'll just pack all that gravel down at the bottom and then we'll pour our concrete. The problem is with so much gravel, every time we make a, a pass going in, all the gravel that's gonna fall around the outsides, I'm worried about not knowing where to go though when I come back. I wanna see an X. Yeah. Please? This is where it gets interesting, man. This gravel is so dry and so much of it. We got two things going against us, way too much gravel yeah. and dry conditions. Yeah. So nothing is packing. Man, I feel like I'm way back, Greg. Am I good? You're good. All right. Gravel stops like down there. Yeah. So we got two feet of gravel that doesn't want to compact because it's just too dry and it's not really compacted. And so that's backfilling and just falling in and we're just going to be cleaning out gravel till we're blue in the face. So the goal is we'll bury the pumpkin up there on these, make sure we get way down into virgin ground. And unfortunately there's going to be some gravel that's going to fall in, but gravel's okay. We'll pack that in with our stamper or hand compactor and then we'll pour our concrete right on top of that. I mean, it'll be a good base. It's not going anywhere, but it's just a real pain to dig. I should be putting this auger in the ground about three times, maybe four per hole. On this, I'm going in and out about eight times because it just keeps filling up. Not the end of the world, just makes our job a little bit longer. I'd say good conditions, I'd probably dig two to three holes per one. Just because it goes that much quicker when the digging is good. Of course, I say that and a lot of you guys are in, uh, you know, areas where you've got nothing but rock and debris in those holes. You can't dig for two seconds without having to pull something out. We got pretty good dirt, so we can't complain too much, Greg. There's a lot of, remember New York? Yeah, it was kind of bad. Oh, it was bad. It was bad. All that rust off, though. What rust? Exactly. What if I hold your legs and you you kind of go head first in there? I mean, I'm the stronger one, so me being up here to pull you out is important. Here, let me let me take this off. There ain't no way you're getting it. No, the smooth rock. No, because you, I don't think you have the... That's why I said, why don't, don't <laughs> knock it in the bottom hole because we'll never get it. <laughs> you never listen Bro, to me, man. <laughs> flip over, go ahead first. That's you hold on to it. I, I will pull you, you out. Won't do nothing. I will, dude. I promise don't I will let do it. Fall no. Head first into the hole. Like no, no. Okay, we got like a pretty good sized rock in here that like Greg leg fall down and come on dude you can do it man you had the longer arms than me remember we've talked about this 
I'm stronger. I pull you out. There's you have no longer way arms. You're pulling me out. Yeah, here, I'll hold that. I'll put it in my pocket. No, I'll put it, put it in the yeah. All right. I will not let you go, okay? I will pull you out with I all have my a might. I trust you. <laughs> Bro, I can I can deadlift like 400 pounds. So pulling you out I've with that rock. See you do that. 315 is easy though. Come on. I got you. I got you, buddy. This is all us, okay? Team teamwork makes the dream work. Oh, let me clean some of that out for you, okay? Let's clean some of this out. All right. Hey, Greg, you want I got an idea. What if we put a sauna tube on the ground right here? You slide through it. Okay, that'll be like your your and then I can tilt it up, it'll give you a nice little slide, and then I'll pull you out. No? I thought maybe you want something to lay on. I, that would be nice, but whatever. Wanna get something? I'm telling you, man, I think a tube would be just ideal. We'd put you in Sorry. that tube. I don't know if I'll fit. Oh, this is gonna be so ideal. Let me show you, okay? Now. You go ahead and start getting in there, okay? As you go, I'll lift you up a little bit. You just hold my feet. I will. I will. This will keep it. This is going to be great. This is going to work great, okay? Okay. <laughs> Don't you dare tip it. I won't. Oh, my God. Yes, this is perfect. You, How far do you got to go? Uh, another, like, eight inches. Eight inches? I can do that. <laughs> okay, you tell me when. If I feel it. You tell me when. Me. Come on! Come on! Hold me up. Come on, buddy! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! See? Look at you, just listen to me. Hey, you're getting your hat dirty. That's a rock. I told you we could do it, man. We work together. We work smarter, not harder. The way. Oh, that's a good one. Nice. <coughs> I told you that worked, dude. And I saved you from getting super dirty. Yeah. We got all of our holes dug. We've got our tubes, which I always am asked about these. These are not sauna tubes, these are the coil inserts. I was looking for a. Okay, this one was earth brown crinkle. So metal came into a factory on these, the roll former that we buy a lot of our materials from, and we just buy these uh, tubes. They get a cut down the middle so that we can form them to our hole. So we do an 18 inch auger. And then what I can do, oh, that, we need to be careful around these holes. We're gonna have to do some clean out. Um, because they keep falling in. What I can do is just take these screws I'm going to kind of form it a little smaller and hopefully I got the right size. Oh yeah. So now we can just put them in here we can find our grade with our laser that we'll set up and then we'll backfill the gravel. So even though this opened crater of a hole is here, it's not a big deal because we're buried down into virgin tight ground. Down, well, that was weird. <laughs> what I mean is it's not this loose gravel. It's nice virgin ground that hasn't been disturbed. Uh, and we want that for our footing. And that is a nice tight hole that we can then set our tube in. And then we'll just kick this gravel, fill this all back in and we'll be ready for concrete. So we're gonna get our laser set up, we're gonna get all of our tubes set up, and we're gonna rock this out so we can get our concrete poured. Get it spinning fast. All right, so we got the rotary set up. Remember, remember when we started this? This was our high point. So we're just gonna come over here to the gravel, and we're gonna set the laser we have nothing else to kind of go off of. It's just kind of whatever we want to do here. And we know that this is what's going to be the best solution. And I need to get that tube pushed down to about there. And that's actually pretty tough. It's pretty amazing. We just set that in that hole, but the friction of the ground, I mean, you can't even push this tube of cardboard in. In that range. 
but I'm going, you know what I'm saying? It's too, we're, that's too far into the ground. Ah! <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, well, that's too much tube. We don't want that much tube. Hey, there's a frog in there. Look at the poor little guy. Why don't you lay in there? I'll put a tube in. You go in and get him like you did that boulder yesterday. Come on, little buddy. Oh! Oh, come on! Uh-oh. Bro, we're doing this for you. All right, buddy. You made your choices. Unless you go down there and save them, I'm not. I'm done. I got work to do. Well, he's got webbed feet. <laughs> Greg, you should be talking in your Kermit voice. <laughs> Come here, little bunny. Um, I'm your I'm I'm friend. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Greg, he's done. Put him out of his misery or pull him out. I ain't got no heart for this. I'm sorry. You better, you want to go down there? <laughs> go fast, go fast. Yeah, there we go. Good work. He is a lucky frog. Okay, that is what we want to do. We're going to kick some dirt. So now we just go ahead and do this deal. Throw some of this gravel around this guy. An inch. Yeah, 16, that's good. I literally pulled out the amount of gravel that just flew back in. Four feet, plenty of pier. Yeah. Not worried about that. And there we go. Okay. I didn't see that back there. It's okay. Good enough. So some of these holes where we have grass at almost the level, we're in the virgin ground here really quickly, which means we have a nice tight hole. So we don't have to use that big tube. We're actually just gonna cut it down as long as we get a nice solid, see this is all solid ground here. As long as we can get our tube in there and get it you know, set, that's all we need to do. We don't need a tube to go all the way four feet down. So that's what, uh, that's how we can really save a lot of effort and time is by not utilizing a full tube, just cutting them down to the size we need. And we have only 27 tubes and 31 holes, Greg. Yeah. So we can't use all fulls. We need to get away with hopefully these, this corner just using halves and then we should have enough. Okay, I can push that one in. 16. Up? Up, yep. Okay. Yep. Go ahead, I'm gonna hold it here. Okay. Down. I wanna go down just a, good, okay. Good yeah, that was good, that was great. All right.
concrete, man, is the most stressful part of the job. Once we're done with this, my stress goes away. But you only get one chance with concrete before it gets hard. So we're putting about a third of a yard of concrete in every one of these holes. Maybe a little bit more, some a little bit less. It just depends on how opened up the hole got on us. But with the sauna tube, we could calculate the measurements a lot better. Greg, I hit the button. <laughs> it's, I don't know why they put the button right next to the button I'm supposed to hit with the button I'm not supposed to hit. Come on back. Yep! This is where our concrete is starting to get a little bit drier than I want. I don't like wet concrete because the drier it is, the stronger it is. But also we gotta kind of find a balance between nice and dry, firm concrete and setting our brackets in there. So. We're about done with this truck, I think, so we're gonna let it go, but this is kind of pushing the dryness factor. Okay, we gotta get all of our strings up, and now we gotta recheck all of our dimensions real quickly, make sure we like it, and then we're gonna get our marks and set our brackets. 50, yep, good, stay there, let's check diagonal, 88. Four and a half, stay there. Oh uh, no, I'll go ahead and come on down here. Good, stay there, I'll check this diagonal. Four and a half, okay. Good, center, good. All right, so these are Midwest perma column brackets. Um, this is a three ply two by six bracket. And what I wanna do is we've marked these lines the center of the post column. And I've got a couple Stabila torpedoes. Now this is kind of, I've done a lot of these videos and I've gotten a lot of feedback and people are constantly saying the same thing because typically I don't have this torpedo. I stick this bracket in, I'm looking at the center of the bracket I'm looking at my level to see if it's plumb, and I'm just kind of shaking it around till I get it where I'm in the center of my bubble, and I'm pushing it down and that's it. Now a lot of people are gonna say, you only plumbed it up one way. What about this way? Here's the deal, okay? I'm gonna take two of these. Now you come in here and you tell me which one should I plumb? Because I got two levels and each of them are going the other way because these ears, not this severe, but these ears are opened up so I can get my column in there. I cannot plumb side to side, so I'm gonna eyeball it. My eyeball is good enough for this because when my column goes in there, I can then plumb up the wall with my chains and lock it in, and these ears have a little bit of flex this way and that way. They're really rigid in and out. So as long as I'm plumb here, good to go. Yeah, I'm leaving off the line. You don't want to touch it. Give it a nice little shake at the bottom. Get that cream around everything. Good to go. Okay, for a corner bracket, you can see this is my sidewall. All the brackets are the strongest in this, this force here. So. My corner brackets are gonna be the same way. I'm gonna run them just like my end wall. And with these, I actually am gonna have another level. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm running plumb off of this line. But then also I wanna make sure that the outside of my bracket, the bottom outside of my bracket, is going to be plumb with this string line. Because when this corner post goes in, I don't want it to be sticking too far out and since I don't really plumb these uh, 
these ears, I gotta make sure I at least plumb the bottom to the string line. I think that makes sense, right guys? Because the bottom is always gonna be the exact same dimension, but the ears, they go out, so I can't plumb off of those. I have to plumb off the very bottom. So I'm just gonna take my, my level here, and I'm gonna go all the way in. Let's see. Shake it over. Corners are the, corners and jams, they're the ones that take the longest because I feel like those are the dimensions that matter the most. If you get a bracket an eighth inch off in the middle, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we're good. Maybe I can do that just a little. Good there, good there. So now when we cut this ear off, the outside of my bracket should be, maybe that moved just a hair. I better move that in just a hair. Like I said, this is the important ones. There we go. Okay, that's gonna be good. All right, so that's a corner. These, these are too wet yet. We just poured these ones pretty wet. We're not gonna mess with those. That's pretty good. That's good for me. All right, first truck out of the way. I like to bring a truck in if we can. If if it's like we were pushing 10 yards, which a truck don't like to bring 10 yards. Um, we kind of got a feel for what we're doing. The concrete worked out good. Now we've got our holes that we've got caved in that we need to finish. I don't know if Greg's gonna try to give it a go. He always gets kind of nervous, but he does a great job in the skid lower, so I don't know why he gets nervous. He's gonna be just fine. Uh, so we're gonna do that while the other truck goes back, gets filled up, and then we've gotta, we've gotta dig a couple dead men. And if you don't know what a dead man is, stay tuned, we'll get to that in just a little bit. But we're gonna go finish these up. Greg is marking a dead man location. Now a dead man for us is just a pier of concrete that we're gonna put some rebar into. And that's so that when we are constructing the structure, it's gonna be like, let's see, a, a 60 foot truss, let's call it 10 feet, about, 30 feet in the air when we set that first tr truss on that end wall and there's gonna be nothing to secure it to. So these dead man will at, they will be anchors in the ground and that's what we can chain off to. So we're gonna go ahead and dig those. There's really no rhyme or reason or perfection needed. We're just gonna dig some holes and then we're gonna fill them with concrete. Concrete, did I say that weird? I don't know. Nice hole, Greg, I like it. Where's the center? Is that about right? Or about there? Right there. Okay. Let's see how good this hole digs having no gravel, dude. No, that's good, that's good. Look at that black dirt. Two, two passes, you're cleaning it up. Where's your gravel rig, buddy? Uh, it's at the other end of the side. Oh. Look at that, that is what I'm talking about. You know, if we would have had all holes in a situation like that, with four inches of gravel, it would have taken us half the time to dig the holes. And we would have had a nice tight hole instead of a crater to backfill. But, oh well, it is what it is. Yeah, I see a little bit, a little bit more splatterier today. 
or this truck is. It's nice, you know, got these controls so we can, we can do exactly what I need to do to fill this up. It's not because I'm like a control freak. Like, yeah, I am type A, but it's just because I can see exactly how fast this thing is filling up and I can control this versus having to get mad when the driver doesn't hear you, doesn't shut it off in time, or he takes too long to get it started up again. It's all, it's all right here. I think it's more efficient for us, right, Greg? That's what it's all about. Okay, usually people always wanna know like, what kind of slump do we use for the piers? What, what's our lead time on setting the pier after, or the bracket after it's poured? And so typically what we will do is have like, what is maybe considered like a curb slump. But this is a lot wetter than normal. So I'm not, I'm not typically fond of my, my pier concrete coming out this wet. So we're gonna have a little bit longer of a uh, lead time waiting for it to set up enough to set our bracket. But typically, typically when we get done unloading a truck with a curb slump, we can come back through and set our brackets. This is gonna take a little bit longer. But this is not bad though, is it Greg? You don't mind this, do you? Yeah, it'll set up pretty fast. Yeah, look at it, I'm, I'm like, I got four different buttons I'm working with, I got my my concrete scooper here. I'm, I'm keeping track of what you're doing out of the corner of my eye because God knows I gotta at least keep an eye. What? I'm doing a lot. I'm doing a lot right now. There's a lot going on. But then again, I'm also just standing here watching this concrete pour. But there, it's like it's like you got the. It like comes and goes. What? Oh, I'm splattered up, aren't I? Yeah, so this is the dead man, and we're just gonna pour this. It don't matter, we're just gonna fill it up, right? We'll pull it out later. Yeah. So this is only a couple, what, how much weight, Greg? About, about 1,500 pounds? Oh, wind's dead right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like that? On it. I'm not. So I got gap between my string. So we're fighting the wind just a little bit. So Greg's just eyeballing, making the, sure the center of this is good. And we're just gonna pin this string line without touching it right, right where we like it. You like that, Greg? It's hard to tell, but I imagine. I mean, I'm, I'm basically bouncing right between those two. Yeah, it's probably good then. Okay. Yeah, I like it. Enough for the girls I run with. All right, that's the last bracket. So second pour was infinitely more, I guess, comfortable. I don't know why, maybe less stress. You get through the first one, everything goes good. You feel confident, but we got all these brackets set. Now what we're gonna do is let them set up overnight. Tomorrow we're gonna come back. We're gonna get all of our elevation marks on each bracket. We're gonna cut posts. We're gonna start building walls and that's gonna be a new video, guys. So. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this series. We're gonna be back to building a farm shop. The thing that a lot of you guys followed this channel from the beginning on is just building post frames, man. Being out here, look at this. This is a gorgeous job site. We got a lake down here. We're all in the middle of nowhere. So make sure you subscribe, follow along. Uh, drop me a comment down below if you learned anything in this episode or what you might be looking forward to in future episodes so we can hopefully incorporate that into the content. But uh, concrete day is always stressful. So I'm gonna go home relax and we'll be back tomorrow with more work.